I know things. For instance, there are 108 beads in a Catholic rosary and there are 108 stitches in a baseball. When I learned that, I gave Jesus a chance. But it just didn't work out between us. The Lord laid too much guilt on me. I prefer metaphysics to theology. You see, there's no guilt in baseball, and it's never boring. Pokey. Yeah, but what do you think of Pokey? <laughs> this is Film Sack. <laughs> Sure. Hello, and welcome to Film Sack. This is Film Sack, mining the very depths of film entertainment for all mankind, and this is episode 620. I'm Scott Johnson, joined today by Brian. He will never forget that time. He got strapped to a bed and was forced to listen to Walt Whitman Dunaway. Oh, not only will I never forget it, I'll savor it every day. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Reminder, this intro reflects the nature of the content we consumed. A rated RF bomb lace sexual romp? You have been warned. Now, this week on Film Sack, we snort, blow, and bitch like a bull smashed in the nut bag with a home run hitter from the infield of the streaming service formerly known as HBO Max, <laughs> where we are left with our mouths agape and eyes staring at this late 80s action sports comedy drama set in Durham, North Carolina, with the softcore porn of... More Tim Robbins' butt than I ever cared to see. Minor league meat heat aimed right up Susan Sarandon's Bermuda Triangle of Seasonal Love, only to discover catcher Crash Kasna Kas Kasna already lost and squatting up in that business and calling all the pitches and showing deuces at the theater of the crotch. Is he shaking me off? Here comes the heat! Anywho, hey, listen, lady. I don't compete for love because I believe in the soul, the man junk, the lady junk, the rights of a woman to have a tram stamp without being criticized, Condoms. Wheaties after long making love making sessions. Condoms again. <laughs> I believe that the poems of Walt Whitman, Whitman are self indulgent, overrated crap that I absolutely love. Now, tie me up and let's hear it. Also, I believe there ought to be a constitutional amendment outlawing little tiny underwear for men. I believe in this sweet spot. I also believe that you believe that there's a G spot. Is it here? No. Here? No. Shit. And finally, I believe in long, slow, deep, soft, wet kisses that last for like three minutes tops. Anything else is a dental exam. Randy, towel me off. I'm going to the show. <laughs> Strong ending. Nicely done. Strong ending. Uh, yes, yes. I'd like to thank you for not saying the show 17 times. Oh, you are yeah, so right. welcome. I'm going to the show, baby. You yeah. were the show? What yeah. was the show like? You were the show? <laughs> yeah, you got the show. Also with us, Randy, he always hits that huge ball. Sorry, I did that wrong. He always hits that huge bowl in the face in center field. Uh, oh. Jordan. Aloha, Scott. Brian. Brian. Randy. Everyone get into the shower together because Ooh. that's something that would happen. And, you know, yeah, no, yeah, you know, grown men all would rush uh, to get into a gang mm -hmm. shower room mm -hmm. together if you told them to, right? No. Mm -hmm. I'm your stare stereotypical coach nathan arizona and you're my stereotypical team of misfits and baby men who each have sports team specific archetypes like the grizzled veteran and the dumb rookie and the player with anger management issues and the other player with anger management issues mm -hmm. and me the coach with anger management issues damn it now we're gonna stop this losing streak right now because that's what terrible teams do, right? Always, yeah. they're terrible teams. Always just stop the losing streak, and we're gonna accomplish that via three easy steps. Number one, oh. no more sex. <laughs> I understand that you're so oversexed that we have to put your wives in a section labeled players' wives while your mistresses sit above the home dugout and pass you <laughs> sex notes. It's got to stop. Number two, talk it out. Apparently, we're playing a sport where you can call timeout all you want and just stand around and talk while the other team and the umpires and the crowd waits for you to decide to resume. Mm -hmm. Number three, it's all psychological, isn't it? You, you think this sport is about throwing a thing to a person by hitting it with a stick into a net or past a base or into an end zone or something. I'm here to tell you, no, 
You win by clearing your mind and by studying Sun Chu or some shit and by stopping having <laughs> sex. You're doing it right there in front of me. Stop it. I'm a mad older man. Now dry off and get celibate. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Hell yeah. We all had to dry oh. off. Yeah. Nice. After that movie. Uh, with us finally, Brian, they call him artificial rain delay Ibbot. Oh, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Just uh, fire up the hoses. Yeah. Hey, uh, how about uh, this one that I was saving for just this song that I was saving for just oh. a movie like this? You guys ready? Yep. Here we do go. It. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I was hired to help the pitcher. He was a big stupid oaf. <laughs> Had a great arm for throwing. But a brain like a slice of marble loaf So when Annie was deciding Which one of us she would bed I stopped and thought for a moment Then turned to her and I said If you like soft car porno <laughs> And presents on Christmas Day If you're not into Sontag Or AstroTurf where we play if you think those will entertain the guys who blew off Kennedy's head, then I'm the player that you've looked for. Quit playing games, let's go to bed. I uh, shortened up the instrumental uh, tremendously. <laughs> well, she decided I was too rude, and Nuke was an easier play. I even think she was considering That the two of them might marry someday But my disinterest yep. was a turn on This is a rom -com, you see Enough of the will they or won't they She stopped and this is what she said to me Yes, I like softcore porno And presents on Christmas Day but you're wrong about Sontag I'll read her any day I'll take you up on three to kisses And show you how I get kicks Ditch the rest of those lollygaggers And make six more baseball flicks <laughs> There you go Love it. Fantastic oh, God. Wow. Your wow. bits where you got to harmonize with yourself and then do that whole yeah. thing. That's really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a high harmony too, by the way. It's not yeah, just it a, is. it's not just a, a, a two-step. It is like, <laughs> it's like an octave and a two-step. It's yeah, crazy. That's a lot. Uh, well, yeah. well done as usual. Again, I can't wait for the album. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we are talking about the film Bull Durham from 1988. And I would like to let fake, not Scott Fletcher, explain oh. more. Bull! Durham Crash is an aging minor league ball player brought up from another team to mature a young pitcher with maturity problems. Both of them become involved with Anne, a baseball groupie with her own perspective on the game. This thing is full of baseball and sex things. Strap in and get ready, suckers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they love how it always what? screams at the top of it. IMDb things. sure adds some weird stuff to the end of its uh, synopsis. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened recently, but they keep doing it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's Bull Durham. Bull Durham. <laughs> this is a Bull movie Durham. I remember when it came out. It was uh, like a, a, a cultural or a, a reviewer's darling. Everybody loved it. Oh, we yeah. about People it. People loved the shit I, out of this movie. All they talked about. Yeah. I don't remember that aspect. That's very really? Oh, oh yeah, I do. Totally Jeez, do. it was yeah. crazy. Everybody who was anybody in well, reviews was like I, just all over themselves. Okay, I'm going to go with Randy on that. Actually, Randy, I'm going to agree with you. The, the I wasn't hearing a lot of buzz with my movie friends. But I knew that the boomers loved this movie. I knew oh, that the older was, folks dude, loved Yeah, it wasn't movie. so much the boomers or the, you know. And the that's not a, that's not a majority. The, I'm not trying to bash on was, boomers. I'm just saying was that was critics. The age group. Like critics lavished this thing. Right. Yeah, like, that's I, what I, I But they were that. all of that I, age groups, right? I, well, see, yeah. I see that I, without a doubt. Like if you go look it up on Rotten Tomatoes, it's like, what, what were they? What? Wow. What? Um, I, it just like I don't remember that being the case is, at the time. I was a kid. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you one hundred percent. I have a friend 
who's like three years older than me, but mm-hmm. has been a, a gener- a, the greatest generation type right. person his entire life. He's like he's like an old. He was old, old when soul. we were kids. Yeah, yeah. like he's yeah. one of these one of these people, and he mm-hmm. loved this movie so much and quoted it so much that I actually thought I'd seen it. I've never seen it until oh, oh, it's wow. your first and, time. Oh, wow! Yeah, I really, this- I really genuinely thought I'd seen this movie because uh, this friend of mine had quoted it to me for 20 years sure this movie was supposed to be a of the time at the time right it was supposed to take place yeah during in durham, modern times durham north carolina but the eight, 1988 it was, yeah sure right but this this movie was making some sweet sweet love to the 50s and that generation's uh youth i mean well and, I feel yeah, like and our, our ideas of the south right like right it might not really matter where you set this movie because it really doesn't matter <laughs> right yeah. but oh, like those like, settings, man, I recognized everything. I'm like, oh, I feel like I've been down that street. Oh, there's that. I'm, That's too shot totally yeah. down there at Durham. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm curious. Have you lived around Greenwood your whole life? Or have Correct. You been, okay. Well, so. I've, I was born in the on a military base, and then we moved uh, m- mostly in the same area in South Carolina for the most part, besides a few little visits to New Hampshire and to Phoenix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you were and you right were born in a tube in the in the base, right? You were part of an experiment. <laughs> I was I was born from uh, I was the first baby to survive. We were at uh, Camp Lejeune. Yeah. Uh, my mom had lost uh, oh. several babies, uh, including my older brother, who actually made it for a while. And then I was fed that I was fed I was fed on that that tainted water in my bottle. So sweet, yeah. No re- reper- repercussions there. No, no, you're fine. Now. <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> so yeah. I, just, I have I have questions. So so you you've been in South Carolina your whole yes. life. Yes. Uh, and the rest of us, like, especially out here West, we always think that North Carolina and South Carolina are really more attached to each other than most States that border each other. Right. So like, right. Like when you, when you just like look from a distance uh, and, and you have a history of like, there's a minor league baseball team in Columbia right. and there's one in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and there's one up in Greensboro and so right. forth. Right. We just assume you just know all those places and you just oh, like, I do know all those places. They're all within your little trips. It's like, Oh, well I can make it to this place or I can make it to that place within one to two hours. So absolutely North, as far as places to visit and I've been to North Carolina many times. However, uh, is there a, a shared love? I mean, we share a football team together, NFL football team, the Carolina Panthers, but, yeah. uh, there is definitely a, right, right, right. But there's definitely a difference between, North Carolinians and South Carolinians. I hmm, think for sure. I just, a, w- watching this movie, I would just get yeah. this feeling because like, they're just like, they're not just saying, you know, there's a team out in Wilmington and there's a team right, down right. in Charleston. They're like naming towns that are sound yes. small, you know? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes. But yes, part yes. of what yeah, makes totally. the movie work for me and the reason I think it holds up and is still good is because the, the leaning into the Southern atmosphere of it all um, mm-hmm. and making it feel you know, it's like it's set in an older time than it actually is, is right. to its benefit. Like the, my favorite people in the entire movie are probably the two play by play and, and shot caller dudes that are, that are all the games <laughs> oh, yeah. doing all the radio. Yeah. I love like those the ones guys. Making the sound effects and then hitting the button. <laughs> like it, yeah. it make it, the, make yeah. it. I've never thought about it, but they, they used to do those. They, you would hear the yeah. bat hit and you would think, Oh, you, you wouldn't think of where I come from, but seeing that guy do it was kind of hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was a year that was, had a couple of, of, critical darlings so that was one of them the other one that everybody right. or that every critic had to love uh was mississippi burning that year also oh, yeah. Mid- midnight yeah. run which i actually think is a lot it's in this wheelhouse it's a totally yeah, different it's a tour kind of, movie, of the small but, towns right yeah, yeah. not even so yeah. much that it's that kind of humor it's like a you know hard r lots of swears Oh yeah, uh, but but funny, but God, that movie is so great. Oh, I yeah. love Midnight Run. It holds up so, too. Yeah. So, so yeah. like for me, Scott, what what I kept noticing in this movie was that Susan Sarandon's character is like, I guess she's like a junior professor, a part time professor at Duke or something. I can. Right. They never actually said Duke, uh, but it, she's no, just they like, didn't say Duke. Yeah, she right. She just said that she's a, a part time professor at. Some, some college yeah, nearby, some yeah. College, like it's implied right like right, what is, right it's the only thing durham has going on from from my perspective <laughs> and, but like she's just like that's all she does and she uh sleeps with uh minor league baseball players yeah yeah and she as, lives a, as in, a public service as a public she service. lives in the nicest house i've ever seen and <laughs> yeah 
Right. I'm just like, how does this? Okay. That house is... actually would be pretty consistent. You know, we live in, when you live in these smaller towns, you can totally get a huge house for much less than you could in the city. That's kind of just yeah. how it is. So in yeah, the like 80s, watch sure. it. Yeah, it yeah, just seemed like she didn't do much other than, you know, sleep with players though. It feels like her job was. Well, just... again, like I said, I think that was a public service. She just loved baseball. <laughs> she felt like well, she, she was. She did it for love a, of the game is what she's you're a, saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, she said that baseball, it's her religion. And, you know, she's yeah. a servant of, of the church of baseball. So she's just, you know, trying to make sure everything is going good, right? That was well, a crazy year, you guys. Just real quick, sorry. Before I close this tab, I at least need to share this. Die Hard, Rain Man. Uh, <laughs> it was an amazing year, Beetle, wasn't it? Beetlejuice, oh, wow. Akira, Big, yeah. Naked Gun, uh, Fish Called Wanda, Good Lord, Coming to America. I uh, mentioned those others. Uh, let's see. They Live was that year. Willow was that year. Like yeah. oh, Heathers, so Dangerous Liaison, Scrooge, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, Last Temptation yeah. of Christ. That was a that's a memorable year of films. Yeah, it is. And, yeah. and it's a lot of some of those were lower budget films. It's kind of like this one. Orion was doing a lot of stuff at this time. They picked up Bull Durham. A lot of people passed on it because it just didn't seem like it could make any money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they that that was proven wrong. They did really well. Um, yeah, I, I wow, well, amazing year though. Yeah, what year was, was this a, again? It was uh, eighty eight. It was right? a good year. Yeah, yeah. decent year for for wow. films. It's funny that's the same year as Eight Men Out. So another big baseball yeah, movie, baseball thing. They talk a bunch in the tra- the trailer, the trailer, the trivia about how the baseball movies were sucking it, and nobody, right. nobody, everybody was having trouble getting this thing sold, and no one thought baseball was a sellable thing, and it went so well that it not only spawned. Uh, you know, Eight Men Out got got way more greenlit after the box office success right. of this thing, but the very next year we got, uh, oh, what is it? We you build it, will come. What is it? The field yeah, of dreams. Yeah, of dreams. Field yeah. of dreams after that, and then there was something else after that. I mean, the natural. There's was a like whole six generation of people who think they can start a business based on that. By the way, because of that whole stupid <laughs> oh, <yeah>. saying. <laughs> I know, right? right. Everyone uses right. it all the time. It's like, yeah. hey, we're yeah. putting an arcade in the mall. Who oh, will? If you build it, they will come. It's like, shut <laughs> up. Yeah. That does not make a successful business. I want to argue that a little (laughs) tiny bit because I feel like you're throwing a ton of shade on the baseball movies that come before Uh this, like Bad News Bears and Bang the Drum Slowly and The Natural, and especially The Natural. There's no shade on them. It's that they weren't considered bankable. That's all. They're good movies. All of them. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 No, I I think you know how Hollywood is. They're, They're weird. They're like really base you know or hockey or whatever it is they they westerns for a while nobody would touch them even though there were plenty of good westerns you could point out and say well what about this one well it doesn't matter we're just not not making any money it's like that so i was i was made to watch the natural as a kid oh Uh, (laughs) sit down son my first yeah my first barry levinson movie i realized 30 years later that my mom had such a thing for robert redford and i don't we all i just didn't know it at the time (laughs) Yeah, I no still idea. do. What are you talking about? Their whole, their whole gen. My mom's same. They're just so hardcore about that guy. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen him? He's he's gorgeous. He was their Brad Pitt or their George Clooney sure. or whatever. A little leathery, but you know. And, sure. and you know, now I understand why my mom taught me to uh, groom my hair this way, and uh. you know, <laughs> <laughs> just so many things. But that's yeah. actually wow. a really good movie. Yeah, and, oh, and absolutely so, like, awesome. I I kind of I scratch my head a little bit about Bull Durham being the sort of the follow-up baseball movie to the natural because it's very different yeah but it's it's really interesting the the writer and director ron shelton who really pushed to get this thing made was had such an had so much experience being around this stuff that's what he was doing and so it's it's real genuine even though it's walt whitman level of romanticism for it Mm -hmm. i i I actually i've seen it before but I kind of waved it off as, you know, older generation kind of film. And I watched it. And there's certainly parts of it that I really can appreciate now more than I did back then. But once again, I, I was still blown away with, wow, is this softcore porn? I mean, if I see <laughs> if I see one more butt, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, uh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, or, or doing it in the bathtub and uh, splashing all the, the candles that must have taken hours to right. set up. Oh, I they are the por- messiest. I thought Porky's was bad. This this may, you know, it may challenge Porky's for his uh, soft porn. Sure. Title, it's I a think. little more yeah. uh, highbrow, I think. But yeah. Right. Like there's the thing I was most struck with is how messy everybody is about their love making. Like It's like, mm-hmm. hey, yeah. I'm getting a little horny after these Wheaties. I could just put my yeah. bowl to the side <laughs> and we could just, you know, go somewhere decent. But no, I'm going to throw my bowl into the sink and break it. Right. I'm going to yeah. dump. What, I'm gonna what move. happens after the fire dies? 
and I kind of want to know what happens with these two characters after the fire dies, because I mean, it's, this is well, sex fueled. They spend uh, the next three days cleaning up the kitchen with the, right. the milk all over the place. And right. uh, seriously, ants, I'm sure uh, they've got to be all over that. Uh, oh yeah. Roaches that down there. You get roaches. I was hoping yeah. that I was hoping that meat was on the front of the Wheaties box, but I, I just, I don't know if they just get a chance to play that off because they kept implying that maybe he could end up on the Wheaties box or something. Oh, and, Having so sex many, and eating his Wheaties. I was so just... many potential stories that didn't get told here. <laughs> right. I want to. I actually want to argue that we should be giving credit to Ron Shelton and the oh, cinematographer. Absolutely. Cinematographer's name is Bobby Byrne. We've seen the three previous Bobby Byrne uh, filmed movies. Uh, that that would be Howard the Duck, Sixteen Candles, and yeah. crucially, Smokey and the Bandit. He was the cinematographer right, right. for that. And uh, I want to give him credit because I actually think when you come away from a movie and you remember that shot of them knocking over the milk and it's spilling right next to them while they're getting it on. Yeah. yeah. When you remember that, that's, that's good photography. Like that's yeah. really like, good. You know? Yeah. I, I wonder how I many times it took them. You know, I got to, you got to dump the milk yeah. what, eight times, eight different takes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I just, or I just even milk whatever, or is it just whatever water stuff. And- yeah, right. I think they just take whatever, however stuff uh, falls down, you just take it. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, you and leave I, the milk open so yeah. that you you can hopefully get that in there too. But yeah. you might get a box of Wheaties that spills out towards them as they're doing it or whatever. But I think I, I think that's and it's really good because I think Ron Shelton, from what I read, uh, what, what the special features I saw on the VHS tape, um, Ron Shelton just kind of like let everybody. J- just happened, right? They got real ball players from the minor league in there. That Costner was, you know, even when they weren't filming him, he was doing baseball stuff. And it was just like, let's just capture everything. Let's just capture all the moments. And I think, I think, like Randy said, that we got a great cinematographer here that just did it. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, again, it could have taken place in a lot of different places, and it doesn't change the fundamentals of the film, mm-hmm. but. The, like I say, the cinematography is about these long establishing shots and too many of them, honestly, I, like mm-hmm. the movie felt a little slow, like a baseball game. Right. And yeah. uh, it <laughs> felt a little <laughs> slow, act especially. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, be- and it's because they're so determined for you to see Durham at night for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I, they're well, good I, shots. It's good. Vi- it's good video. At least I mm. appreciate it as someone who lives more local to this stuff. I really felt at home. I was, I was amazed like when I watched this when I was younger, I just you know not, didn't even hit me at all. But this time around, I was like, oh, oh man, I know that little place. No, that's just way cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really it, it it nailed the location, I think, pretty well. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I also think just the like overall... just like uh, Meat did to oh, go ahead. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> nailed, nailed it. The <laughs> overall the, t- the overall tone of the movie I think worked pretty well for me anyway because Ron Shelton was also a former minor league baseball player, and I think yeah. this yeah. you know his experience showed up here, and you could feel Absolutely. that like what what was it really like in those locker rooms? How how did what was that banter like? That felt real to me. Didn't mm-hmm. feel made up. I thought, who's the guy that plays Arliss on HBO? Um, he Robert Wool. Yeah, he's your se- yeah. your second in command. Uh, I love Robert Wool in this movie. He's great in this. Just always, he's so stoked, dude. He's all he's you know he's got enough tobacco to uh, you know start a fire. <laughs> He's course, he, he's yeah. constantly uh, doing that. <laughs> that the chatter thing you yeah. do when you're in baseball. He was a highlight. And his, uh, for sure. his his delivery is probably the best part of that. He's the punchline of that uh, that mount that uh, discussion on the field. All the players yep. coming in and talking about, well, we need to cut off the head of a rooster for him. His dad's yeah. in the audience, so he's all nervous, and we're trying to figure out what to get Millie and whoever yeah. for their. Uh, I love <laughs> that that was an aspect of a minor league coach. I loved. I just love that. And again, again, I haven't seen the movie, but I have sure heard Robert Wool talk about that scene in every interview he's given for 30 years. Right. Uh, He loves that. He loves that he was allowed to ad lib uh, and, and like he believes he came in and, and, you know, he he gave them the take that they ended up using in the film. Right, and right. He's very, very proud. Oh, they hundred percent did. Be. Yeah, I thought that was great. That whole bit. That's to me. That's the crux of the film. It's mm-hmm. where the humor comes from. It's not slapstick. It's not. I don't even know what you call it. It's like it's a, genuine humor, right? It's is right. it's heartfelt, genuine humor. Yeah, and even though even though it's kind of um, I don't know, there are times where it's like. You could say, well, that's immature humor. That joke was, stu- you know, whatever. But it felt yeah, like yeah. the people saying it would say it, you know, it didn't feel yeah, right. forced. Didn't feel like somebody what? was saying something they wouldn't say in the context they were saying it in. 
what, what I want to what I want to ask, uh, and and again, this my problem here is that I've seen so many fantastic sports films over the years. They all came after this one, so I'm trying to forget that. But my question is, what's the plot of this movie? What are the stakes, and why do we care? It's oh, absolutely, it's yeah, yeah. It well, you know, it's it, it plays so heavy as a love triangle. And so mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's this really with, it's, with like flavors of baseball. Yeah, it's too. It's really it's it's funny because you uh, from the outside, you could look at this and say, oh, it's a rom-com that happens to have some baseball in it. Or it's a yeah. baseball movie that happens to have some have some romance but, in it. And it really isn't. It is it is a baseball and a rom-com kind of yeah. equal parts. And so your stakes are. Um, Here's a love like baseball. To, I mean, it got it's got the balls and the bats and, and you're yeah, trying so to get to home base. You're trying to get to home base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you've got you know the stakes are that you want Crash to be successful in um, turning Nuke into a good pitcher, um, but you also want him to be less jaded and find right. love. The thing is, life. it's set in a Triple A team where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Costner completely fails with Nuke. Nuke is going to leave either way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Nuke is out. And yeah, like, and like you said, it was a love triangle. I have never read a book or seen a movie about a love triangle where none of the three people really <laughs> cared whether or not they end up with any of the other. <laughs> right, right. I've never seen that. Yeah, and, and so weird. that's like <laughs> that's why I'm asking. What are the stakes here? Like they're they're really passionate when they're making out. But they don't really care. Like the yeah, yeah. Nuke gets to go to go to Tampa or wherever. Like he's out. He's gone. Yeah, he doesn't, but he doesn't even have a parting shot. You know, that's the that's the hallmark of the will. There won't they? They have to act like they don't care. I think Ooh, you know yeah. you get the you get the very genuine response from uh, Sarandon when she you know she and Costner are having that fight and she kicks over the ironing board and just says I want you. And he like again rebuffs her and turns her down, and I think that's when you get the most genuine moment of oh yeah she you know she really does care, and it's not just like a ooh he said he said some pretty things about the designated hitter rule and the you know long wet deep slow uh, <laughs> yeah and this is and this is usually week. easy for her right like the whole concept yeah. is that she's got no problem dancing around town right. with whatever the hot boy of of the team is at the moment, and then now it's not working he's he's got. Uh-huh. I don't know if you call them standards, but he has like, uh, he has (laughs) like, he has has standards that are based on, I'm not just going to get pushed around. He showed it with the coaches. He showed it with the team. He showed it with the, with nuke and he showed it with her (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He even showed it in the end by showing up again. He quit on his own terms. Once again, he quits on his own terms. Like I, there's something about that 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 drives the whole movie. I think they're, they're playing a little bit with seasons of life, right? Uh, in in this they they didn't play it heavy handed or anything but there's definitely like they're all moving on to the next season of their life by the end of this this is one last hurrah this is just one last intersection Mm -hmm. uh it's like a winning season in a a baseball team right this you Mm -hmm. you everything comes together and it plays well and once that is over it's a rebuilding year and yeah that's a really good point because like uh millie ending up with the christian guy Right is a, is a, is a version of that. It's a version. It's it's subtle, right? Like they're actual characters and stuff. It's not a theme, but it feels themey because when that happens, where this girl who is really gets around, they make a point of that, mm-hmm. um, is now going to end up with this guy who is the very polar opposite of that. It's right. a change in seasons. It's like a moment of oh right, this none of this lasts forever. All your glory days, all your expectations for yourself as a ball player or as someone who's, you know, uh, sleeping with all the ball players, whatever your goals are, they <laughs> right. change because time happens, age happens. I mean, hell, when they made this movie, Tim Robbins was 30. Uh, Kevin Costner we was 33. We haven't talked about Tim Robbins' performance either, by the way. 30, 42. 42. Yeah. Like, you know, they're getting on for what they are and who right. they're supposed to mm-hmm. be in this thing. In her case, she's, you know, she's not young and yeah. you know sultry no, no like she used to chicken be. anymore right and in yes, their case yes. you're not going to play you're not going to play major league baseball for much longer if you don't get your ass into the majors at 30 or you're screwed yeah. so it's i don't know i that's the thing i think i take away from it back then and now is this feeling of change of like right here's how it is right this second however what are we doing to be ready for what's next and none of them are none of them are quite ready 
I, and I, I like understand that. that Tim Robbins was 30, but his character, Ebby Lelouch, <laughs> is like 21. What, 22, or yeah, 22, 21, and something like he that. He's very young. Perfectly. I feel like he acts circles around Kevin Costner in this movie. And I just loved, <laughs> I loved everything about his portrayal. He was so into this character. You can yes. tell like he really got like, it's, it's such a trope, the trope of the new picture with control issues. Oh my God. It's been in every movie that ever was made or w- included a baseball. And he just nails it. He is the trope. He, maker he's pretty great. Of- and I, I would, but I would not say Kevin was bad. I would say though, that when Kevin Costner and Tim Robbins were in the same scenes together, right? Kevin Costner's performance elevated. He was better going yeah, they, against him. Very Robbins. good chemistry, yeah. right? For sure, yeah. for sure. But what? But what if we? What if we had gotten Anthony Michael Hall in that? Tim yeah, Robbins it was supposed role? to be right. right? It was supposed to be the, the studio wanted <laughs> Anthony Michael Hall. Thank and, uh, God we didn't. Yeah. I mean, I love. I love him, but that would have totally well, messed with the dynamic. Well, hold on, film. though, because in 88, you're talking about the one that was in Edward Scissorhands, and he's an the old buffer. Yeah. buffer. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think. Yeah. Would well, he be able to play? He doesn't feel like he can play. Uh, I love, by, by the way, so I'm, I'm full stop. Like, I love he, Anthony he, Michael Hall. Oh, but yeah. I just don't think yeah. this would have been right for this. No, he, he, I don't think he can play. Like, uh, Nuke works because Tim Robbins is an idiot that doesn't know he's an idiot. And I don't right. think Anthony Michael Hall would be able to play an idiot that he's doesn't very, know he's an idiot. He seems very yeah. smart, right? That's a decent Tim point. Robbins can play dumb as dirt. He I really it. can. Well, it's a good yeah. thing yeah. that Ron Shelton, the creator, the writer and director said, I'm walking from this project unless you pick who I wanted, which was Tim Robbins. And so they yeah. relented yeah. and did it. But, you know, yeah. they just, it was the right choice. Yeah. Especially yeah. given Tim Robbins' hulking size. Like he yeah. just he he comes across as such a baby man, and I just yeah. love I love that the first time we see him, we're looking at him buck naked from behind. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. just, it, he is just carrying a woman. This little woman is has climbed him like a tree. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just like it is so freaking funny. If you ever want to, if so- you if you ever want to see, or if you ever wanted some comparison to how tall people are in Hollywood, so he he is towering in this movie over everyone. Yeah. He's a very tall yeah. man in Silo. He was very tall compared to all the other actors. I am literally his height. So yeah. my the point of that is is to point is to point out that Hollywood is mostly little pe- little tiny people, short average height people. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, because I wouldn't guys. have ever said Kevin Costner is a short guy, but compared to Tim Robbins, he's a little tiny yeah. guy. And I just looked yeah. up uh, the actress that he's yeah. holding up. Uh, she's five five. Yeah. Well, and also uh, coincidentally, we were talking about Reno Nine One One and another movie yeah. starring Thomas Lennon. Uh, those two are married. Thomas Lennon. Oh, and, uh, what? Plays oh yeah. my gosh! Also, the movie we're watching next week is uh, from the Look same is from the same year this came out. So, I don't know what's going on with 1988 and people's. 1988 marriages. is having a is having a moment in our brains. I guess yeah. so. Right? Yeah. How but many yeah. years would that be now? That's a that's a even number, right? Or five number, right? Let's see. What is that? Uh, you got me. Forty is it five? Forty five. Uh, so yeah, it would be an anniversary. Thirty five. Thirty five. Oh, go with thirty five years. Yeah, yeah. So he is six yeah, years yeah. away. Tim Robbins is six years away from Andy Dufresne, just for a reference. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. yeah, not too long. I don't no. think. You know, Kevin Costner still has boyish good looks in this one too. You know, he still, still, has, still oh, yeah. has. I mean, he has them, and he. <laughs> it's sure, like, yeah. yeah, he he he. Uh, I mean, you look at him now and he's still an attractive man, but uh, right, right. he's so Gina, imposing. Gina and I both agreed that he's much better looking now or aged better than he right. looks in this film. Yeah, I agree. He's also, he's also become a much better actor. Like I, I, oh, yeah. every time, every time he had to do serious acting in this movie, and it was mostly against Susan Sarandon. He was having to like have chemistry and be romantic. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like, I felt like, yes, there is a choice here to play this character as aloof. I get that. But I just feel like, oh man, I wish I had the the modern uh, Costner that he would become as an actor. Yeah, I'm and I'm bought. I bought her passion toward him. I didn't buy his passion okay. toward her. Um, and part yeah. of it that surprises me because this is Susan Sarandon meeting Tim Robbins on set. This is where they met, <laughs> right? Yeah, and they got married for a long time makes sense after for that. The, but that kind of makes sense for the character, though, right? Uh, it kind of plays well, even if the chemistry is. If it, maybe it kind of worked. Well, I think uh, by the end you want it to be you want it to be like certain, right? You want it to be like right, right, they're right. really going to knock this milk over and go for it. And yeah, and <laughs> and I never quite bought that he was as into her as she is into him. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah. I did at yeah. the end though, because when he shows up on the porch, that's and that's a, when he's that's when it's supposed to happen. Because up right. to that point, he's still wrapped up, yeah, in his romanticism of what things should be. You know, he still thinks he should be in the show. 
even though he can't accept the fact that he's already done amazing things, being the, you know, making more uh, home runs than anybody in the minor leagues. Yeah. He, still, Rand- he still can't accept that. Randy is correct that I, I think this is almost irrefutable. I think Kevin Costner just gets better as time goes on. Yeah. He's like a, he's like a, yeah. uh, milk this on the floor. He, he, he gets, <laughs> he gets better. He's the opposite of the milk. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right, yeah, right. He <laughs> ages well and like the milk on the floor, but I'll tell you, no one's as good as Max, the clown prince of baseball. Oh, oh yeah. That guy's great. Yeah. Is, God, uh, so but is he God. responsible for the thing that gross get out the most or was I it? Don't, the, uh, was it I the please? chest hair? Yeah. There's <laughs> only one. Please, please go ahead. Insist. <laughs> right. Yeah. I have to insist that, Susan Sarandon licking uh, both, the, men, yeah, both yeah, that, that on, is, on their hair and their on their hair on their skin, hairy has, nipple has chest. To be the thing. Well, not right. a question. How could you even be anything? Well, else? let's get let's do this. Gross. So here's here is I had to make a bit of a list. All right. Yeah. Because there were some things that really threw me. I all, believe in what grossed me out the most. I believe in <laughs> you guys. You guys, you, you totally nailed it. I don't want to yeah. lick anyone's hairy belly to chest anytime ever. Okay. No. Ever. Forget sure. it. So that's gross well, in its own way. But here's the other things that got me spitting, <laughs> spitting chew in the Coke bottle on the bus. Our oh, yeah. Yeah. Freaking gross. I'm so desensitized to that. I am not me. Where foul. I live, I'm so desensitized <laughs> to that. All I could think of was Brian's old roommate. It's gross, gross yeah. me out. Yeah. Oh, God. Mountain Dew. Um, then there was spitting the ump and uh, Costner yelling at each other so close yeah. that I could Chest see bumping. the spit hitting each other in the face. You could just draw a circle around a dozen things where people spit in a baseball game. Yep. There was so yeah. much spit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think there's a difference between the clown prince of baseball spitting straight up into the air <laughs> and then clapping. <laughs> Cloud, that cloud that you know some of the heavier droplets are coming right back down oh it's face. very gross yeah, yeah there's no yeah. question about that the other thing that got me is uh that made me never want kevin costner to go hang out with her again when she's doing the cleanup she finds an old cigarette butt and decides that's clean enough from the floor to light it up and sit there for a while and smoke it <laughs> Why not? gross Why not? gross this movie had Why a lot not? of gross that's yeah, her floor though you yeah. know it's a floor, it's her floor. It's a floor. she knows, she knows whether she's you can yeah. uh, smoke a cigarette butt off of yeah. it. Yeah. You can slurp you can slurp milk off the floor. It's delicious. Yeah. The only thing that I didn't make the list that should have is all the sax music. I freaking hated that. But that's oh, I a... love the sax music. <laughs> I <laughs> loved it. Only because it reminded me every five seconds that I was watching a movie from the eighties that involved yeah. romance and sex. I yeah. was like, Yeah. I don't I'm know, because the rest of the some of the other soundtrack bits were fine. I don't I'm not a big fan of uh What's his name's uh, put me in coach? I'm ready to play. I can't think of yeah. his name. Oh, uh, yeah. you, how but of course, they're going to use that. How do you not play Creedence, that in this Creedence movie? Dude, uh, yeah, I can't think of his yeah. name, though. R- Hag- uh, Mahagerty? No. Mer- Mahagerty. Uh, uh, no, but it's something like that. It is uh, ma- something. Oh, my God. Why Gaggerty? This is so much fun. Guy's name? So much fun. Oogity, 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 haggerty. Fogarty. Fogarty. When are we going to watch Tim Dan Cup, the sister to this film? When are we going to watch Kevin Costner get on with Russo? When are we going to watch Tim Cup? Yeah, well, that's the same. I'd love to watch Tim Cup. Same, a, yeah. same director, same writer. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. are we going to watch the sister show to this one? we got to see it. He made another one of those, basically. It really is very yep. similar. I like that one because Cheech Marin's in it. That one's a good oh, one. yeah, 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 yeah. No brain. Big, no brain. big fan of the old Cheech. Uh, that was that yeah. came out in the season of golf movies. It yeah, was like yeah, these right. things come in groups. <laughs> they do. Yeah. It's hard to say which ones really drive them, but like, you know, ah, would, drive. Would, <laughs> would League of Their Own would a League of Their Own happen without the success of this and Eight Men Out and uh Field of Dreams and all that? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it would happen. Yeah, it's a really good yeah, major league very, very next year. And I don't I don't know if I would have went to hmm, I don't know. I, I wasn't know. necessarily enamored with baseball at the time, so I can't say. I'm a giant I, nerd for for baseball movies, and I don't even follow right. regular season play. But I've seen, uh, I've said this before, but I've seen Ken Burns' documentary, which is 18 hours long plus the extra inning stuff. If you count those, so uh-huh. good. I know, so and I've like, watched that thing four times over. That's 18 hours times four. You do the math. That's a lot well, of documentary about a sport yeah. that I I'm completely <laughs> enamored with it. <laughs> Dozens of hours. It's yeah. dozens of hours. So when I see a movie, like that's why I love The Natural so much, um, because it to me captured Naturally. the the mysticism of baseball. Because there right. is a certain mythology. Oh, let's to speak it. of the mist. Let's speak of the mysticism in this one when we have a guy with some chicken bones on his. <laughs> is that, a, that's a trope. It's a, a trope. Yeah, yeah, that was a good, pretty good yeah. trope. Does it have a name? Got a Dominican. 
Yeah. You yeah. got a Dominican, you're going to get some voodoo. Oh, and they mm. slam it. They just slam it all the way to the home run with an, uh, Major yeah. League, right? They do that over the much, top. Much more. Yeah, much more in Major League. Holy cow. Yeah. What has the most, what sport has the most superstition? Might be baseball. Most, I think baseball is absolutely, yeah. I mean, other, other sports too, but baseball is known for its superstition. Right. right. Yeah. They and, t- and it gets played on a lot, I feel like. It's a long, slow game until last year. And <laughs> it's like, ser- seriously, you know, right? You all, yeah, you've all heard. Two hour, two up. hour, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So, but it's a long, slow game. It's got a ton of people who don't participate in any given game, right? Like the right. the, <laughs> the funny thing in this movie is they, they act like the team has no other pitchers. And right. actually in real life, you carry two or three pitchers in the minor leagues. And mm-hmm. like your, your pitcher, your starter is like sitting around for days and days, you know? Like, of course, they're going to generate their own little religions and practices, right? Yeah, it mm-hmm. makes sense to me. It feels like maybe yeah. another one would be well, gambling's not a sport, but you know anything where there's like a lot of chance involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, if you if you count stuff like World Series of Poker, I'd say there's a ton of yeah. <laughs> superstition there. Yeah. But I think out of your 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 big sports, your true sports, I think is your oh true sports. Oh, the gauntlet has been thrown yeah, down. True sports. Yeah. Yeah. Fun... Let somebody let somebody bitch at me that uh, World Series of Poker is a true sport. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, up. you'll take oh. that argument. Sure. He's just, doubling down. I just want to acknowledge <laughs> that that's a really fun discussion. What's the difference between a sport and a game? Yeah, we no. need to have it here. I'm just saying that's a fun discussion. No, it is. Okay. I feel like I they've been. I don't find it fun at all. They've been trying to make that. <laughs> argument about the esports for years and whether or not it's got the level yeah, it's, of the actual it's, sport. It, it basically boils down to this. It doesn't require athletic skill. That's where most people draw the difference between uh between a sport and a game, right? That's kind mm-hmm. of where it comes. Yeah. As far as uh by the way, people that were up for the Nuke LaRouche role. And by the way, he doesn't need a nickname. Just call him Nuke, mm-hmm. which y'all Everybody did anyway. Everybody gets a nickname. His nickname is, is Nuke. Yeah, this but is they, before uh well, ESPN and Chris Berman really made uh, nicknames a, <laughs> common, a really common thing. Yeah, remember those days? Oh, yeah, Chris, Chris Berman, Berman gave a nickname to everybody. That's fine. I love Chris Berman. Berman. He hasn't done anything to make me mad, has he? Let me take my shirt. Okay, go ahead. If your <laughs> if if your first name was Ebby, he would have called yeah. you Ebby. He would have called you Flo because you would have yeah, been Ebby yeah. Flo. Oh, Ebby Flo, yeah. sure. Oh well, yeah, I could. See he, yeah. I don't remember him doing that, but I guess I didn't. Ebby Calvin Lelouch definitely needed a nickname. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. Uh, but anyway, some other folks that were up for the job. So we talked about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Michael Hall. That didn't happen. Kurt yeah. Russell actually helped develop the script and they were buddies, him and Ron Shelton. And they were, he was penciled in to play crash. He was supposed to be the Kevin Costner role, but got bombed with other stuff, got too busy, whatever, ended up going to Kevin Costner. And Russell was so impressed after he wrote fan letters to both Costner and Sheldon telling them how much he liked it. According to the trivia. I don't know if this is true, yeah, but that's yeah, what yeah. it says. Mm-hmm. The other people, Jeff Bridges and Don Johnson turned down Don the role of Crash. Johnson. Yeah. I can see Don Johnson yeah. always has been visually, Perfect. physically a stand in for me uh, for for Kevin Costner. I, I don't necessarily oh, think really? that Interesting. Phys- physically mm. they seem similar to me. I'm not saying their their acting is anywhere near the same. Well, you could I see think. if you put those two guys in, uh, you know, stand them next to each other f- for uh, Django and you said, all right, one of right. you is going to be this mean old plantation owner. You could probably right. pull it off with either one of them. I, yeah. They ended up doing Johnson, but I, I know what you're saying. There's something about them mm-hmm. where they could be interchangeable. Charlie Sheen was supposedly up for the nuclear roo- role, but oh, he was God, already, then that would be bad. That would ruin his chances for major league. Well, he sure was already, he was out. already in eight men out that year, same year. So, Oh, that's right. Yeah. He would have done three back to back baseball movies that. and that would have been weird. Oh, typecast Charlie Sheen, mm-hmm. the baseball guy. Maybe he needed that in his life. I don't know. Maybe he did a little, mm. little anchor, yeah, a little something to hold him down, you know, yeah. keep him from mm-hmm. snorting Coke off of nipples and things like that. And his, <laughs> you know, Charlie, Charlie, Sheen, it's, it's real easy to look at uh, again, other movies that come later and go, well, you could have, you could have really done something in Bull Durham, but like the point of this movie, it seems like it's, uh, it, it's not got, um, a, a lot hanging on the bones. And so like, Ooh. like, you know what I'm saying? Like this couldn't have been about a major league team and major league movement for, for guys. Right. Right. Like right. it needed to be about a small team and a small crowd where a woman could meet all the players. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. there's just, there's this stuff about this movie that makes it really, you know, it's, 
I, I hate to use the word small over and over because it's not like it. There are some but expansive it's, aspects, right? right. It's, but it's small, supposed to be small. Yeah, right? it's because small to its its benefit. I think. To yeah, its, I mean, it's, its, it's the it's it's not the major league. It's not the show, right? It's supposed to be that. It's supposed to be small. Everything. Yeah, and the and the yeah. fact that he goes, he gets called up is also kind of small because it's only because of some expansion team and it's a it's yeah. a half season thing like it's not even a full blown the next big and MLB star is rising out of out of Durham North Carolina right. it's not like that it's just like hey we got a f- spot to fill seems like you got a good arm you've improved this year yeah we'll, and, we'll pull and will he will he be able to make it or will he be just a repeat of crash will he basically live uh, the same life all right and they so, even gave yeah. us the clue that he's still just stupid and irritating and you know, the way he's picking up on the reporter lady, it's just like talking yeah. about Motley Crue songs. It's like, you're such an, he's still an idiot. And I don't know. I like the smallness. I like that about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I do too. And I, the thing I wrote after the movie ended is the one thing that has really stuck with me as a question. And that is why the hell is this called bull Durham? How is that? How is that completely different than if you, if I said, Hey, I got a script here. My movie is going to be called Astro Houston. You'd be like, okay, <laughs> right. I need you to explain that to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah why I always like, thought it was the titular character is what I thought before I yeah, saw like it. Like the character was named bull Durham. I yeah, thought the yeah. same thing. Yeah. 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 But no, it's a Durham bulls. What the frick? What they they never right. explain it. And, and it's like, I guess that's kind of cool, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like if I actually got you to invest in and make a movie called Astro Houston and yeah. never explain the name, you'd be, right. I'd be, I'd be like, yeah, I pulled one over. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, sucker! Yeah, a Durham of their own, a, a bull of their oh, own, a bull right. of their yeah. own. I like that. A bull of their own. That's pretty good. How about this ain't porn, but it kind of <laughs> is. <laughs> well, my uh, dude, that's funny you say that. My memory of it when I was, I mean, I was what 18 when i saw this right. yeah yeah um i rem- i thought it was wall to wall susan sarand and kevin costner sex time i really did that oh, was my really? memory of it wow. and yeah. so when i watched this i was like not only is it not that till the end it's purposely not that he's like avoiding her and he's yeah. he's yeah. making he's playing hard to get like all these other things are going on but in my memory they were always licking each other's hairy chest. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know why, because I was eighteen. This, this, that's that's how trauma feels, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That explains a lot, dude. Yeah, yeah. That explains a lot. Um, I don't know. I just don't know if I'd marry a guy who can't just set his cereal bowl in the in the sink. It's just as reachable. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, don't I'm have to you. go sling uh, crash. Like, is that why he's called Crash? Because he throws his uh, dishes around? Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, Trixie. Yeah, right. Uh, Annoyed me though. Maybe he's rubbed some chicken bones. Really on that. did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Really, <laughs> you can tell the, I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you a quick story about that whole Robert. set. Hey, if you get a whole new set of, <laughs> of the cereal bowls because you bought them as a four pack and then you only have three, right? I'll, get to yeah. Walmart and get that done. Sorry, Randy. What you have a story about who? Tim Robbins. So he, you know, he falls in love with Susan Sarandon. I yeah, guess. Yeah. I mean, maybe they don't. Maybe it's just this is where they met and they fell in love later. I don't know. I don't know. But. Yeah. She's twelve years older than him, yeah, and that's that's remarkable in Hollywood. That's cool. Yeah, we yeah. we all we all kind of like feel like oh, okay, it's good. That's a good thing, right? Well, it's, it's usually the big. opposite. It's usually DiCaprio yeah. and some twenty-two year old. So right, yeah, so then, that's fine. Uh, that's balance forward, to the force. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they're married for fifteen years or something. And I want to I want to fast forward to twenty seventeen. Go in in twenty seventeen. Fifty eight year old Tim Robbins married a woman named Graciela Brancusi an actress from like, uh, Greece. Well, I wouldn't say that because I can't say that. That's a hard name to pronounce. <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a, you're Rob, you've got some Robert <laughs> Wool comedy going on here. Yeah, right, right, that's right. really good. <laughs> uh, 2017 guess, uh, I want, uh, so he was 58. I want you to guess how old Graciela Brancusi was oh, when they got married in 28. Yeah. Just because we're talking yep. to DiCaprio, I'm going to say 23. Yep, you looked it up, didn't you? Oh, did I? No, no, no. Twenty-eight. No, that's perfect. Wild guess. That was the wild pitch that hit the hit the mark. Okay. He was thirty years her senior. Wow. Right. And now, now for those of you who are approaching maybe an age like fifty-eight, I want you to imagine, yeah, <laughs> yeah. being I, I don't think- know like being uh, feeling as though you're physically responsible enough right. <laughs> to yeah. to enter marriage with someone Here, here's why it's ago. really hard for me to grasp it, it may have been easier when i was younger but now it's mm-hmm. not easy to grasp at all because i have kids who are yeah, yeah. my daughter my middle daughter is 26 the idea of dating a 23 year old right yeah, yeah. sounds yeah. like the 
grossest thing I could attempt. It sounds well, yeah, horrible. It also, it also sounds yeah. like hell. And I want to know <laughs> how did they, I want to know how did they meet? What was the, right. like, and it's just because of the age difference. Well, like, he he played uh, golf with her grandfather. And uh, <laughs> right. look, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely uh, seasons in life. Right. We, we, every, every decade to two decades, we as people shed our skins essentially and become different people who have different outlook on life. And you still have some core beliefs and stuff, but a lot of things changes. And when you start getting outside of that 15 year range, in my opinion, it starts getting a little bit weird because y'all haven't had the same experiences and you have less in common. So those quiet moments that aren't filled with passionate physical you know, whatever you have to have somebody you can have a conversation with on a daily basis where you can relate to each other. It's like, Oh, it'd be being this age sucks because I hurt here now. And when you're trying to tell a 28 year old that they're like, whatever, old man, yeah, I just what, don't, it's what about when you're at the odd. age where it hurts everywhere? Now, right. Right. All the time. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I guess I didn't realize that uh, he and Susan Sarandon didn't didn't get married. That they were, I, uh, they were just, just partners. So have I been saying yeah. is Sarandon wrong? Because I've heard both of y'all say I've been Sarandon. saying Sarandon until I pulled up her Wikipedia page, and it's clearly Sarandon. Yeah, Sarandon Too bad. has You're been Sarandon correct. to me, and I will continue to say it. Wait She's, for my Twitter. She post. says I get, I get one right? Susan Sarandon. Sarandon, like like the kid from Friday Night Lights. <laughs> <laughs> different sport though different sport yeah you're saying i got one right Hold i on. think you got so, it well, right all right here's Good the job. thing you might have but here's i can't <laughs> read these We're weird little credit <laughs> little weird characters you know i know my pronunciation guides and stuff but these right. little weird characters on the wikipedia page for uh for susan sararendon um, well here's one that uh, says is uh this is supposed to be accurate i'll play the audio let's see if right. this is it i don't know if it's right pronounce names.com all right, here we go. Susan Sarandon. Okay, wait. there you go. There's another one. That's what he says. But he what does that like mean? It's a question, Susan though. Sarandon. What the hell does that mean? Does it, it sounds matter? like he's not sure. Correct matter? pronunciation of your name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is this is this has a bunch of people in here looking at the pronunciation <laughs> of the actress. Oh, name. I love it. The French guy <laughs> who does the thing. I love the, the guy. Rocky Horror Picture <laughs> Show <laughs> and Thelma uh, and Louise. Oh, it says there are two pronunciations. Guy. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So here's all right. Here's number one. Right. Susan Sarandon. That's number one. This is number two. Susan Sarandon. Oh, that's ah. just a lady. <laughs> all right. Sarandon. I think it is Sarandon. But you can say it any way you want to. I just thought it was Does odd it that we right? had we had two people on the show that were saying well, that way. I'm like, I, well, I, I, said said it, I said it. I said it. Sarandon at the beginning of the show, and then after looking oh, okay. at you know after hearing Randon, Randy and looking at Randon and looking <laughs> <Randon>. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, I'm gonna start calling him Brandon. I get, love it. What is what is that A E symbol jammed together? What does that sound like? Uh, you know, right, I know yeah, my yeah. Uh, I know my schwa. I know my uh, <laughs> accent mark on the se. You know, we got the se. We know right. it's, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, she gets the name from uh, Prince Humperdinck, right? Right. And so, like, uh, you yeah. might want to ask where yeah. where how does he pronounce it? And and right, then right. at that point, I don't care. So I'd like to hear on. her say yeah. it. Oh, here here's her. Okay, I just found it. Oh, okay. Saying cool. it. Uh, let's see. Thursday, here she is, Susan Sarandon. Okay, that. Oh, this is uh, Susan. I, I, I'm honored. Welcome. I, I'm. Okay, that's well, a, that, that must was, have been sounds, during the uh, COVID right. when yeah. <laughs> Fallon had no audience. Yeah, <laughs> sounds a lot like Jimmy Fallon there. Yeah, well, yeah, it sounded uh, definitely like. Well, we'll let the audience at home decide how they want yeah, to say. Yeah, it. You, you say do what how you want. want to in this context that we know who we're talking about. There's no confusion. There's no brand confusion. We're talking about Bull Durham. We know who when you say Susan, yeah, Sarandon or Sarandon, we know who you're talking about. That's right. Yeah. Now, I want to share a piece of trivia that I also have some scrutiny for. Scrutiny. Now, you know, Chris Sarandon is married to the snake lady from Blade Runner. Please That's right. That's right. Continues. That's right. I'm going to mark that down as absolutely true. All right. Check this out. <laughs> this is scrutiny because I just don't know something about it. It seems weird. But Paula Abdul incorrectly believed that in exchange for choreographing Tim Robbins' bar dance moves, which this is she's in the credits for this, mm -hmm. she would get a line or two in the movie. When told no such deal was agreed upon, Abdul marched off the set screaming, according to Ron oh. Shelton. Now, maybe that's true, but that just seems ins that seems insane to me for some reason. Yeah. She was yeah. younger Especially then. Since, since it was a, a scene in a bar where they're doing some dancing, they could have easily had 
her be a barfly who gets right. a line or two right. that would have would have changed nothing. it wouldn't have been any big deal so i i don't know i feel feel fishy about that one but still it's also my favorite at the same time so <laughs> i guess <laughs> thumb up thumb down i don't know what you do there uh well there you go uh should we do some clips about this film the oh, film? you got yeah. clips from this film? It was so there was hardly any dialogue. Oh wait! Oh wait, there was tons. It was oh. some brilliant dialogue. <laughs> oh right, film. right, there was. Yeah, uh, there for was, example, yeah. uh, we get a little line here. Oh, that's weird. My um, let's make sure that worked. Yeah, it worked. Uh, so you get this, for example. I believe in the Church of Baseball. She believes in the Church of Baseball. Yeah. I would go there. I'd go There's there. There's a lot of Sunday. believing in this uh, in right. this movie. Yeah, I, like, Scott, I would go there too. Just imagine uh, how long the service is there. Oh my gosh! No. Yeah. We have a we have a uh, church of cannabis here in Denver. Oh, I'd go there too. Yeah, I Let's went go to there both. and uh, okay, all right, all right. I'll go to one and then the other. The stained glass is really cool. <laughs> is it? Mm, they yeah, have stained yeah, glass. Really, really, actually, really is. Yeah. Is it like all the, big like weed leaves and stuff like that, or what? No, is it? it's it's a former church, a former real church. Yeah. Um, and they just left the. <laughs> the the stained glass in there and it for whatever reason still looks like it kind of fits with the uh church of cannabis wild Mm -hmm. uh here's something about a left nut man guys give their left nut to be in your shoes oh this is a sad story actually that coach guy the manager (laughs) yeah died like not long after filming from a he was only 40 and he had a brain aneurysm out of nowhere and just died it's awful yeah i went down a bit of a rabbit hole on that guy that's the nathan arizona right the uh, is that the same guy? We're talking about different guy. Is that the same guy? It, it, it's they're similar. I certainly could see if if it's not him. I, didn't I know could certainly was... see how you could switch the two. It they they could are very. Yeah. It could be the same guy. Yeah. Trey could be Wilson. Somebody very Trey Wilson. Yeah, Trey Wilson. Yeah. Is that the same guy? Yeah, same oh, guy. Okay, there oh, you go. Oh my gosh, that makes me even sadder then because he was great yeah. in that. The he my name ain't Nathan. Aaron. Yeah, he was Boy, in he, Twins. He's he was, in everything. He was. Uh, he played. He he's an old looking forty year old. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you wouldn't look at him and go, "Oh, he's younger than Susan Sarandon by two years." Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's really weird. Uh, Sarandon, whatever. Uh, let's do this one. <laughs> this is something. Oh, it's a baseball hit, and I just like the sound of it. Ooh-ah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Ooh-ah. Got a little ADR out there on the uh, on the field. This, uh, this movie has a bunch of little things that are intended to give you a broad view of what's going on at a minor league baseball park, Mm -hmm. but really could have used just a tiny bit more explanation. And the one for me that really stood out was the radio announcer adding sounds to the call on the radio because it just felt like, okay, there's a story here. You know, I really want to know why is this guy like, is it because the team isn't really doing it? There's no crowd. So he's adding crowd sounds. Dunaway, didn't you say earlier there was a reason or they used to do this when you were growing up? Well, there wasn't really a reason. It's just that uh, Ron Shelton was around that stuff. So he knew the the, yeah. the realness of that, even though it seems I mean, absurd. Mm-hmm. The reason probably would factual. be is that in a in a small market like Durham, where you have yeah. a lot of local fans who want to hear the game, you have to have somebody doing a play by play with you know yep. somebody's yep. somebody who's getting oh is a it was a third base hit okay third base hit <laughs> you know and then yeah, the yeah. Crowd noise. yeah. so it's just for the local you know local audiences they probably just for a little flavor a little flavor it just I I just wanted just one line. Of explanation, right. like is this guy <laughs> remote to the game? Is he like is he pretending yeah. like this is a road uh, uh, game? And he's they kind of yeah. I'll give you the line. I'll give you the line. Yeah, he's a remote 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 announcer for the local Durham fans who want to hear the game, but there's no right. live feed. You know what it's and like? It's like this. Back up. It's like this. Wait. Something's gross. Gross. Oh, that's better than me just saying something's gross. Or if I say, <laughs> "Boy, that was an interesting trope." <laughs> That's better than just saying there's a trope, right? Like, I think that's kind of what they're doing. They're trying to give people even more so because there's no visual for these people. And I'm, I'm guessing like there's lots of radio broadcasts of MLB games now, right? Sure. Uh, And then, but for a small town game like that, they don't have mics parked out there on the field. They don't have. Well, yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. That's what this is exactly why this is. Cause yeah, you've got somebody who's relaying the plays of the game to uh, somebody who can then do the live feed to the Durham audience who can't be there live and there's no live feed yeah and they're home going yeah right exactly <laughs> uh here's a a laugh i don't know what this is oh ow and then a laugh or something anyway here <laughs> oh i know what it was they were talking smack behind the bar and i think costner yeah. said well i think your arms are something but your brain oh. or whatever and this guy goes 
<laughs> so you way <laughs> overacted. Burn, <laughs> like a, baby. Yeah, that was a before a zing. Yeah, zing's yeah. a burn. Woo! He way overdid it, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, here are all the things he believes in. Uh, most of them, anyway. What do you believe in, then? Well, I believe in the soul. The small of a woman's back, <laughs> the hanging curveball, high fiber, good scotch, but the novels of Susan Sontag are self-indulgent, overrated crap. I believe Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. I believe there ought to be a constitutional amendment outlawing AstroTurf and the designated hitter. I believe in the sweet spot, softcore pornography, opening your presents Christmas morning rather than Christmas Eve, and I believe in long, slow, deep, soft... Wet kisses that last three days. The pussy. Okay, I kept part of it. <laughs> right, oh, God. I love that he you edited it out and then re-added it and re- <laughs> re- put it back in. Well, I, I took was going to ask you, like, what about his uh, poultry I, and felines that he likes? <laughs> uh, I warned I warned everybody before we started this. this yeah. Better, uh, yeah, we, we, this is uh, related to the content we watch. Yeah. Well, and especially mm-hmm. in 1988. Like, this was, like... Right. Him just randomly naming the most, you know, like the most vulgar terms right. for genitalia. Like, mm-hmm. that's like, wow, that's impressively R rated in 1980. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it was, I remember the time, like I said, I thought the whole thing was doing it back in the yeah. day, but yeah. that's part of it is everything <laughs> was just like forbidden fruit. My mom would never let us watch this movie in this house. Oh, no. Like, I had to go with friends to see this somewhere. I was 18, but, you know, I was still living there. Uh, here's a he he he. <laughs> I like Hosner's little laugh. <laughs> he's a, he's pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah I, like it. I, uh, I was also amused, by the way, in his little monologue that uh, he wants to outlaw both the designated hitter, which everybody agrees yeah. with, and astroturf, yeah. which is still being debated. Yeah. And like 35 years later, right now, all across sports, there's still a debate going on about getting astroturf off off and getting making everything natural grass yeah i think that's right funny. yep right. i do love that the uh i believe pete rose should be in the baseball hall of fame never never uh uttered by oh anybody. god <laughs> pete rose no. at, at the top of this they just how many times did we see pete oh rose? yeah we saw him doing yeah. a big a big uh, dive on home plate yep i yeah. thought he was yeah. flying yeah. everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. by the way dive. can i have a can I have a quick trip alert of course hold on let me find the tab there it is <laughs> If you're going to have Tim Robbins pretend to be Fernando Valenzuela through the middle third of this movie, right. for some reason, you also have to show me a picture at the beginning of Fernando Valenzuela and his bizarre delivery, yeah. because that's the only way I'll make the connection, apparently. And it huh. worked number on me. I was just like, oh, my God. Like, the movie is starting. And I said to Samantha, oh, look, there's a there's Fernando Valenzuela. He was known for uh, rolling his eyes every time he threw the ball is like his bizarre thing like how could you do that but he was like a really effective pitcher and then the middle third of this movie <laughs> tim robbins is doing the same exact thing thank you movie yeah. i just really <laughs> thank appreciate you, movie. that i <laughs> should always have a thank you movie moment here on yes, the show. thank you movie um now i have i often get a lot of weird audio from the 80s of brian asking you know going on dates you know like prom and uh-huh. that sure prom and stuff yeah, yeah it's right? usually post date or maybe on the date or whatever but i got one today that is you asking a friend who had already been out with the girl so that uh-huh. you could know whether or not you should ask her to prom all right and this is what you said. Is she uh, as good as they say? Wow, well, dude. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that artless guy. I that, was, that was homecoming, name. by the way. It was, uh, <laughs> that was you know, homecoming. Yeah, I was auditioning her for prom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was once again Robert Wall doing that. Um, okay, shower shoe. Oh, this uh, fungus shoes. Your shower shoes have fungus on them. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. That's it's gross. Pretty, it's pretty gross. I, sh- I could have put that in the list, but that could have been a faked up shoe, so I didn't know for sure. Yeah. Uh, this part made me laugh. Get a hit, Crush. Shut up. <laughs> I did like that. I do always kind of chuckles a little definitely, bit to soften it as yeah. he's walking away. But, definitely yeah. improv. I think that, yeah. was, that was definitely improv. I, I, loved I loved how he seemed to be having a special sort of fun on the field. You know? Yeah. He, that, he's had some... He's had some uh, baseball experience too right kevin costner if i remember correctly well i don't know about him maybe i know uh um who did i say earlier oh uh uh, the director no yeah yeah oh the director definitely did but yeah i think i i I want to say in the in the special features of my bull durham vhs which i've mentioned twice already no one's even responded to um they were definitely talking about that kurt russell is gonna pretend like i didn't even do it i know russell played but i don't know anybody else i don't know if costner played or not he might have 
Was he like a triple yeah. A? Uh, Kevin league? Costner was a former high school baseball player. There oh. you go. And he actually hit two home runs while the cameras were rolling. So, uh, oh, wow. He did he get a free steak? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to hit the that, cow, baby. There's trivia about that. Did you see the trivia about that, Scott? No, no. I missed that. So that, uh, so that sign was invented for the movie. Mm. And then when they, when they wrapped up, they left the sign. It became a part of the local like thing for that stadium. Yeah. And it still exists. It is still a awesome. case that the state, the, like the stadium managers have a deal with local restaurants that you're going to get a free steak. If you hit that's it. Oh, that's amazing. Awesome. Was I'd there any trivia that. about the, uh, about the, the, uh, death riots that happened when they had the helicopter drop the cash out from the field? Is that- <laughs> yeah. The thousand <laughs> oh, bucks. Yeah. 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 I've I never, just want to, I've never been to anything where money was dumped on a field. I just want to say, horrible idea. I just yeah. want to say, if you're going to drop money, that's a, that's a great, I think it's a great idea. Like, yeah, but you only have five Brilliant. people run out on the field. You give five you people the, uh, the, the ability. It's so much more fun to see a handful of people losing mm-hmm. their minds yeah. than to see a oh, hundred people each get crowd. $2 yeah. Yeah. and beat, right. beat each other up for yeah. it. Yeah. And then Not you can mention- cut it. Then you can cut it down. Say like, well, it's $400 and it's five of yeah. you go. And then people are still going to freak out because it's just five of them. They're going to try We're going to go all. treetop level with this helicopter. We're going to drop some money out and we're going to, going to spread that money everywhere with those. This is going to go everywhere. It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. It's going to be bad. I think I found, this is for us only, but here, but I think I found Tarantino's favorite, shot of the single shot of the film <laughs> there it is right there oh, yeah. oh, it's got yeah. feet yeah. i'm sure there's feet oh god it's what yeah, the, that's it's, that long slow pan where it you're was thinking, and you're like what's he doing down there exactly like oh feet gosh is, yeah what are we gonna see here and it's just how he's painting her toenails painting her nails <laughs> how dumb but tarantino woo, got him in the yeah. movies yeah. All right. hold on let me let me pause this part really quick <laughs> Uh, yeah. Excuse me for a moment. One. Uh, <laughs> I need it, a little privacy. It's I'll actually the bun. it's actually the 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 resting state of the trailer on IMDb. Like <laughs> it right. really is. That's yes. funny. Yeah. yeah. If you're not auto playing, the, anyway. the, the, the footy resting state. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on IMDb. Checking it out. Leave me alone. All oh, right. I got to see Bull Durham again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, here's what's the, oh, I enjoyed this lost kid thing. It's a small thing in the background, but I enjoyed mm. it. Here it is. Folks, we have a little lost girl up here. <laughs> Says her name is Lida Ann Baker. What are you doing? She'll be waiting at the ticket box for her daddy, Cedar Baker. Peter, come on, get your little girl. Crush. Come on, Peter, come get your girl, Peter. <laughs> Peter Baker. <laughs> Love well, I it. thought it was going to be Studer, Studer St- Baker. I didn't. I was waiting for some kind of big joke. There was no big joke. <laughs> oh, there, that would have been funny. Yeah, yeah. Studer Baker. Well, this is all while uh, Costner's writing. I want to f you on a piece of paper and giving it to a little kid. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Hilarious. I mean, I What's guess he, he warned the kid player. He said, "Don't look at this kid" or whatever. But yeah, the kid yeah. didn't warn the next kid that he had. No, it off exactly. To. He's like, "Oh my God, what does let's f mean, mommy?" Yeah, <laughs> right. Dumb. Uh, here's a fun line. Dim, pretty boy. Dim, pretty boy. Dim, pretty boy. <laughs> Dim, some pretty boy. I like Dim's it. Dim, pretty boy. Here's my adjective, yeah. and then here's my noun. Um, <laughs> here's uh, let's see. Oh, some some of that baseball chatter from Arliss. Come on, look, you're the man. Nobody, nobody, nobody. No Chuck Arkin, Chuck Arkin, you got anything? <laughs> <laughs> Such nonsense. I love it. I laughed at this. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> when you tell him to quit Stop. playing the guitar in the yeah. car. <laughs> Uh, I put, I gave you guys that gift, but him uh, six foot four Tim Robbins climbing through a bus on the seats is really a oh, shot. That's such a great shot. Yeah. yeah, that's actually how I pick my seat when I get on a Southwest Airlines <laughs> flight. I would pay real money to get video. <laughs> Somebody put a GoPro on behind you or whatever, and get Brian doing that. I would pay money yeah. for that. Really? Oh and yeah. And then him yeah. being escorted off the plane. You don't laugh <laughs> around on a plane, buddy. We know that. There's no yeah, way. Is that effing around though? It's like uh, you know, you just get on, you tell the. I don't know. Why don't you f around floor and is, find out? Floor is lava, <laughs> and you start yeah. doing that. Yeah, you say it's part of your religion. Then you can yeah, get yeah, away yeah, with yeah, anything if you do that. See how that works out for you. Yeah, Definitely I would. I would have to that. use some of that money I'd win to pay for early another, bird. Another like flight. basically make sure I guarantee myself a one access <laughs> to the uh, to the plane <laughs> flight group a seat or uh, uh, entrance number one, so that I could be the first one on the plane to do that. You'd have to. Oh, yeah. I love that. Oh, gosh, I love yeah. the shot. Because otherwise, you've got people already sitting in those seats and they'll be pissed. <laughs> they'll be so mad. Can you imagine? Stepping yeah. on some arms. Someone's oh, going to grab your one of your legs or something and yank you over or do something. Yeah. Uh, no one likes to be called meat, and this clip proves it. Listen, I'm sick and tired of you calling me meat. 
He said effing meat, but I cut it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but you got to cut out a lot because there's a lot of f bombs. A, a lot of swears. Yeah. yeah. I usually bleep them, but I was lazy last night. I didn't do it. No pain. Yeah. Uh, here's Tim Robbins waking up. <gasps> All right, from his dream there. <laughs> Oh, 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 yep. oh. That where after he after he dreams he's uh pitching sort yeah, the of most naked unnecessary two minutes of this film. I don't know. Kind of hilarious <laughs> being Tim and wow, he's so tan. I didn't he's, know he must have yeah. He tanned yeah. up for the job. Oh. Mm. So you never know. <laughs> did, did, did anybody else uh, get suitably outraged at the blown call at the plate? Oh, was, oh, oh yes. yeah, the, he yes, was definitely, he, totally he definitely tagged, tagged, the, tagged the, uh, Oh, yeah. He tagged the pissed. runner, and that runner never even touched home base. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, I like yeah. when he walked off the runner as if he'd gotten it. It was all the done deal, and Costner is like, I don't know, we're 30 seconds into the argument, and Costner goes, he still hasn't touched the home plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I was really <laughs> impressed. Like, the, the it was captured in a way that you could definitely follow the controversy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's not easy. That was really impressive. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. great. Here's the announcers that we like. Two nothing Bulls in a second. First time the Bulls been ahead in weeks there, Whitey. Mm-hmm. Let's see if the real <laughs> nuclear mm-hmm. will show up. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Whitey's just, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I know some of Kim's family like that. They all talk like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, here's an 80s punch. Oh. All right. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yep. oh, that, what did that side of beef ever do to you? Yeah, right. Here's the 80s again. Ugh, I can't go on. Oh, I you can almost that. You can almost oh. see. You can almost see the steam rising from the manhole cover as the oh, saxophone God, player slowly that. enters frame. I love can it. Can so anything much. take you back as fast as something like that? That is wow. Team, it feels team like it deluxe away is yeah. in the house. <laughs> that is that is like the leftovers of the Steve Martin movie Roxanne, which oh, I oh, love. God, so oh, I much. love that. Yes, I love. But Roxanne. what is? That's why good. did it? I feel like we were getting over it by then. But all these. 80, 89, no, 90. 88. Oh gosh, no. No, yeah, no was, we still we had peak. We still had a couple more scenes. We, scenes we had even had lighting to get through. Yeah, Red Shoe Diaries. That's true. Clinton hadn't even come out and played on uh, Arsenio yet. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's but right. right. Exactly. But I don't. I'm where are we at I with think, the sax now? I think the Red Shoe Diaries successfully killed the saxophone sex song. I think. Yeah. yeah. Is it dead though? Oh, let's see. Saxophone. The saxophones death. aren't dead, but the saxophone love music is probably a little bit. Um, yeah, it's just there's. I'm trying to find something. There's not much to find. But like, what's what's the mu- what's the love making instrument now? Is it the violin? What what do we do when we have some the love triangle? Now? Is yeah. it the triangle? Ding. <laughs> ding 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 ding. I don't know what is now. Like yeah, if you're having a hot scene, it's probably be some gently weeping guitars. Maybe what do you think? Is uh, it- yeah, well, that would be the uh, the guitar. <laughs> the guitar. I think. Um, Oh boy, that's a great question. What is today? Yeah. I mean, you just don't, you don't, I mean, you, there are still movies obviously that have those scenes, but they're not as, it's not like as, oh, let's uh, have a really sultry sex scene. Let's it's like usually it some up. sort of plot, plot driven moment. Yeah, there's not, there's not steamy sex scenes much no, anymore, right? No. It's just uh-uh. more like hardcore rock'em. Rock'em Sock'em? Why not? Rock'em yeah. Sock'em Love. Rock'em yeah. Sock'em. I'm sure. trying to think of the last mm. movie I saw, a current movie that I saw that had something like uh, something like that in there. I mean, you get some with uh, Oppenheimer with uh, Killian Murphy and Florence Pugh. What did, um, what did, uh, what did DiCaprio uh, get music played when he was in the Titanic steaming up the, the back seats of that car? What was um, what was that? You guys oh, just, that was, was orchestrated. Orchestra? Yeah. Just just Howard orchestra? Shore score or who, no, Howard okay. Shore, whoever that was. Yeah. But it's, it was, like I, was when, it I, Zane when I think to, of when I think of this sort of thing, take my breath away from Top Gun as maybe oh, sure. king, so sure. king of them all. And I feel like today you just do that. You take a popular song, or uh, okay. you know, it, 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 what's her name, Eilish, Billie Eilish, going whatever she does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever she does. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what she does. Yeah. Really. It's a little more, it's a little more mumbly, but that's pretty much what she does. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. That's terrible. Um, all right. Where the hell were we? Let's move on to... Oh, I got two more of these. Here's the end of a laugh. All right. There's that. Oh. Good one. Yeah. yeah. That's great for like when somebody makes, says something that's really not that funny. You can play that as yep. a... It's like, oh. oh. Yeah. Hilarious. Nice thing. Man. Here's uh, something Cute about a, a dinger. Hit my dinger and I hung him up. <laughs> Hit my dinger. Yep. Hit my dinger. <laughs> I was a little annoyed. We had a continuity error there where she was walking home in the rain and sees him on the porch. She, her front of her skirt is soaked through, just soaked right. from the rain. 
She gets up there. Are you sure? Yes. Sits down on the <laughs> bench. Sits on the bench. Totally dries a bone. No problem. Right. That uh, annoys me. Give me give me some yeah. continuity, Bull Durham. What the hell? More like bullshit. All right. Bull. Oh, I know. Pretty dark. All right. Let's move on <laughs> to uh, this thing right here. <sighs> 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 Time for the film sack checklist. We'd like to have a weird little baseball kid to pass our messages around a stadium. Check. Yeah, yeah. Nothing sure. quite like Take an iron. <laughs> nothing quite like an Iron Maiden T-shirt under your Miami Vice suit jacket. Check. Mm-hmm. And finally, wonder what Costner cost her. All right, that deserves one of these. Hold on. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Star Trek Connections. I'm going to bet that Arliss dude is in Star Trek. So that's Look, my only I, guess. I will be the first to say that Robert Wool could have easily played Neelix. In fact, oh, there's, wow, probably, yeah. there's probably a Mandela parallel universe where Robert Wool <laughs> played Neelix. So uh, you'll, know, you'll know when we've made the switch over. You'll, sure. you'll remember <laughs> that he didn't used to. But alas, no cast connections for this oh, movie. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, it was like three um, weeks in a row here. Sheesh. Yeah, we've got four, I want to say four, like, deep connections. Like, first assistant camera, assistant camera supervising dialogue editor um one this of those might be a, go ahead this might be a, this might be a call for us to do another star trek movie we haven't done one oh you so think long. when we after, when we start running out of connections we once we, seasons, yeah well, basically after after, after <laughs> four strikes out strikeouts on uh star trek connections we have to yeah, watch yeah. A star trek i movie? think that's yeah i think that should be the rule okay. yeah it All lets right. us know we've gotten too far away from center mm. how come the clown <laughs> prince of baseball that dude's like practically a whole star trek race without yeah, right. any without, <laughs> Um, I was really surprised that this was his only feature film. I really thought, oh, like, because I remember being a kid going to minor league games, and like once yeah. a year, your local minor league team would get the clown prince of baseball. Yeah, and there was yeah, like yeah. a big deal. Or yeah, gonna, gonna go yeah. see this guy. So this guy and was person, uh, was he one was he actually a thing like that? And he just had oh, a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's the real deal. Yeah. He's the real yeah, deal. He, tra- he would travel around and he would make it to one game a year for like five dozen different teams yeah and he would perform and he would they would let him perform at least where i lived they would let him perform the whole game like yeah he would be out there from the the start and then like he's like when there's an argument at the plate he comes out and he's the third guy in the argument yeah Yeah. Yeah. i like that funny they'd let him come out and spit on himself that's great that's fantastic oh yeah totally they didn't let him (laughs) he demanded gross uh all right well so very little star trek connections and that's okay uh, soundtrack grade, and yeah. you're giving an A for appropriate for the most part. I uh, I think we're sort of jibbit over here on the on the sax stuff. It just doesn't land for me anymore. Um, but uh, you know what does though? Like synthy music in "She's Having a Baby." You remember that movie? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. With yeah. Kevin Bacon and all that. There, that is the most synthy soundtrack you'll ever hear in your entire life. And I find that one compelling and i still like it even though you don't hear it anymore i right. you know the uh the soundtrack and this is going to kind of give away my tms recommendal this week but the oh. synth music in elemental which is a brand new film but has a soundtrack that feels like it could have come from any decade uh blew my mind and is now my like background music while i'm working jam Ooh, i kind of sound now like i need or i need to see that and hear that you do need to see that yeah i like that we're supposed to watch it with Van this, this weekend. We'll see. This oh, movie's cool. composer. Nah, you never heard of him. His name is Michael Convertino. Uh, he did a lot. Like he worked, but he, you know, he he never got above this. Like That's, it was like he composed the score for like the Santa Claus and like oh, interesting. That's yeah. what I call. It's my nickname for when I'm having a quick chat. I call it a Convertino. It's like, hey, <laughs> just have hey, a quick uh, convertino. Hey, yep. Kim, can we have a quick convertino yeah, about go uh, over here. the groceries? <laughs> grab, grab a little drinky drink and let's have a convertino about the, you know, <laughs> I like that kind of talk. <laughs> uh, all right, there's that. Now the social media post. Oh, it's a dark mm. day when this happens. So let's do it. It's uh, summing this thing up in 280 characters or less. And I think this week we'll toss the baseball with 118 stitches to Randy. Bull Durham. Nice. Bull Durham. There once was a woman who screwed whoever put her in the mood, but she chose a big dummy, licked his hairy tummy, and made Scott Johnson say, (laughs) (laughs) ooh. 
<laughs> oh. Oh, I was wondering when we'd get a limerick. That's awesome. This is really good. Make have sure you, you done a haiku yet? I yeah. haven't. They're really hard to get across. Like, the, yeah, yeah, what's going? What's going on? When you have to be told it's, it's a haiku so that you yeah. know why you're hearing those. Weird... Yeah. So we need to watch the movie haiku, and then I can nail. There it. you go. Yeah. Make sure you put that in the thing because I want to post that for patrons. Yeah. Uh, and finally, oh no, sorry, Dunaway, Brian Dunaway. And finally, without Ibbets, we go with Bull Durham. <laughs> Like when Susan Sarandon opens her bedside table of naughty toys and Walt Whitman, you be cocky and arrogant even when you're getting beat. That's the secret. You got to play this game with fear and arrogance. Hashtag the show. Yeah, the show. Make me want to play M- MLB. The, the show. show. The show. Let's now swing over to Brian Ibbett. Bull Durham. I believe in quantum physics. I don't believe in fighting. I believe in a free stake, and I believe you shouldn't sing and play the guitar if you don't know the effing lyrics to an Otis Redding song. <laughs> and I believe in a free stake. <laughs> nice. Wait a minute. Free steak. Yeah, two steaks. Or if you two say steaks. it twice, it'll make it extra nice. I like that. Two steaks. And I did realize, I did notice that I did it after I read it, but I <laughs> did notice I put free nice. steak in there twice. It's while even I was better that it. you kept it. I love yeah. it. And I would also go for two free steaks right this second. Oh, yes, please. Uh, Well, that's all well and good. We now have to talk about these titles. Foley work. Look out. Foley work. Look out. Yeah, I got these titles right here. I just just mushed up part of a contract. That's okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Nullet boy. Here's the uh, alternate titles. It was almost called The Grand Adventures of Nuke and Crash. They thought that was a little too (laughs) old to me. So it almost uh, and then and then they and then they almost chose a woman with no job doing it. Oh, uh, except I'm she did comfortable. She did work at the uh, university, I guess. Right, sure. doing who knows what. Um, all right, here is your emails and texts for the week. This is uh, where we do a little correspondence. Filmsack at gmail We got one from Gabby who says, "Don't hurt yourselves when you pick up this uh, this name that I have dropped." But Peter Coyote is a family friend whom I've known since the age of three. He was just visiting my parents' house this summer. Just thought I would show that out there since you all referred to him in the last episode. We got him confused with the E.T. guy. Uh, I do look forward to the four of you chatting every week. It's so comforting. I try to play six degrees of separation each week. And as my family seems to know so many people on the (laughs) periphery of movies, cheers, Gabby. That's a lot of people you just drop names. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, whole crowd drop. Nice job. And, and uh, exactly. next time, next time you see Peter Coyote, let him know. Really loved him in A Walk to Remember. That's a oh. soft spot for me. That mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. it too. And uh, ask him to listen to Film Sack. Thank you. Yeah, yes, please. and Thank I'll you. keep listening to every time. Uh, you uh, Ken Burns uses him for like sixty percent of his documentaries. Oh uh, yeah, amazing voice for documentary stuff. Mm-hmm. His his uh, Roosevelt's one, psh, so good. I'll uh, I'll send uh, Gabby a set of keys that I'd like to have Peter Coyote uh, autograph for. Oh, me. that's great! Have him jingling like that. Uh huh. Yep. Uh, I don't want to hurt this kid, but boy, the government's sure stepping in. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's another one. My good sackers says Matt in Salt Lake City, right here in my hometown. I've been watching classic uh, Hammer horror movies of the '60s yes. and '70s lately, and I it occurred to me that you all haven't sacked any yet, and it's kind of hard to believe. Wait the closest you've we watched, watched one, didn't we? Well, he says the closest you've been able to do is the Legend of Hell House, where you got that amazing shit sound clip. Shit. I should add that ready, but we know the one. Uh, yeah. Tubi has several streaming now. Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing playing Dracula and Van Helsing and a few of them. Uh, there are also lots of nude witches. All of them are cheesy. None of them are scary, but they all are great, says Matt in Salt Lake. P.S. By the way, I will never forgive you all for watching King Solomon's Minds. Oh, oh okay. Wow, that's that, a weird one to get uh, to I know. forgive us for. There's so many other ones that are unforgivable how many, curses. How yeah. many Hammer films do we have to watch to uh, absolve ourselves from uh, from that? Probably just one. I mean, how many, have we not done any? Technically, I thought we did. I've, I ought to look deep, but I, I could have. I've had we did I've had one. King Solomon's Mines on my uh, on my watch list. Hold on, just a second. Well, we saw that. Yeah. We saw that. But Hammer films are great, and it's a good time oh, to Hammer watch films, them. Sure. Yeah, if you, yeah, if so, you're uh, Halloween's coming up, but I don't think we have any on slate this year. But I certainly but, mind but on my watch list, I mean, I'm just guessing because I, I I haven't memorized all of them. But my watch list is littered with movies that are probably Hammer films, like the right, you know, like the Brides of Dracula and this kind of mm-hmm. thing. And yeah. they're still making Blood this shit. The movies, yeah. There's one this they're year. They're still making this shit. Can you believe that shit? They're still well, making their that shit. their 175th film is Doctor Jekyll came out in this year, and yeah. it's a Hammer. Productions thing, the Lodge in yeah, 2019. It's not just, and it's Doctor Jekyll. It's not just like a re-release for 
No, now we're gonna do that. Let's wow. just go with Doctor Jekyll and Sister Hyde. That's a much superior night. Yeah, listen, who's in it? Joe's oh, directed by Joe Stephenson, written by Dan Kelly. Who cares? Stars Eddie Izzard <laughs> as the title <laughs> character. Okay, uh, <laughs> and it's a new adaptation. Hold on, huh. we else? should have people s- tell us what Hammer film is the yeah. absolute de facto. We could. There's some that I've seen for sure, but I, I think we need, need a little hand holding here, maybe. Eddie Izzard. I thought he went by Edie now. Dracula. Sure. Well, e, I, I'm sure that stuff you're guests. reading, you're, the stuff you're reading is probably out of date. Dracula AD 1972. I think I remember this. Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. I found yeah. a, a list a list that tries to rank them, and the mm. top five are number five, Plague of the Zombies, 1966. Okay. Mm-hmm. Number four, The Mummy, 1959. Mm-hmm. Old school. Number three, The Curse of the Werewolf, 1961. One million years BC better be on this list. Number two, The Curse of Frankenstein, 1957. <sighs> yeah, I think I see. And that then one. the number one is Horror of Dracula, 1958. What? Oh, there we go. Horror, Horror of Dracula. Horror. Yeah, no, we need one million years. Now BC this sounds on that like the well. this. You're right. This does sound like the best of. You got the the most intriguing of the most team, weirdest team, of team gibbet again on that one. I want to see that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. After Which the one? Shawshank Redemption, I want to see one million years BC. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, interesting. Horror of Dracula 58. Let's see. This is like, I liked hammer films mostly like from the late, the sixties and seventies. That's the stuff I liked. I'm not yeah. saying the 50 stuff's not good, but it, I just like, that's my jam. Oh, there it is. Again. Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee. This must be the, 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 which uh, is hor- no brainer because these guys were all over the hammer films, right? They were. Oh yeah, for sure. It's hard. Not who is. So brainer. hammer's a producer, right? Somebody named hammer. Or they just call hammer. hammer. No, they they're they just, just uh, they said, just "Well, it'd be a good." Crunching. They said, "Hammer, that looks good." <laughs> really? I always thought it was a dude. I thought there was some guy. There is a guy. Hammer. Yeah, is his name Hammer? Absolutely, Mike Hammer. He, You're making uh, this up. Solves <laughs> Armand Armand Hammer. Armand Army Hammer. <laughs> Army Hammer. Or maybe, Hammer. maybe they're related to Army Hammer. I don't know. Yeah. Army Hammer is a real. No, dick. it was. <laughs> Uh, well, let's move on to this uh, text we got. We got one final thing here. This is a text. 801-471-0462 is where this came. And uh, filmsack at gmail.com if we would rather do an email. Here's what they said. Just, uh, oh, and this is anonymous. I don't have a name. Just listen to your episode on The Flash, and you were talking about bad roommates. I can't remember who mentioned the glass bottle with tobacco. That was Ibit. Uh, with the spit in it, I have a story yeah. to add. He says, my college roommate did the disgusting tobacco chew as well. He spit it into Mr. Pib bottles, and he says, Ugh, "He says yeah, this is would. important." He says, "On one occasion, I was at my computer and reached for my bottle of pop, and just before I put it into my lips or to my lips, I realized that the bottle was warm. Yes, uh, I almost uh, drank his tobacco spit. Uh, On another occasion, in a rush to get dressed, I spilled an open bottle of his tobacco spit down my bare leg. I'm uh, still not sure how I I didn't beat him while he was sleeping." Anyway, <laughs> thought you'd enjoy my story. Keep up the good work, says Anonymous. Oh, listener. my gosh. Wow, it's very different than the Peter Coyote one. Yeah, very yeah. different. <laughs> we have come full circle, yeah. Randy. No, we've very gone much, full 180. So. No, we've gone 180, right? Yeah. Not 360. Yeah, that would, yeah, if you're trying to turn right. around, you need to go 180 degrees. Right. right? If you're, yeah, if you do a 360, you're, you're facing the I same. I almost said 90, door. and I'm like, wait, why 90 degrees? 90, why would you do a right angle? That's weird. Nobody yeah. ever does that. This conversation yeah. just went 90 degrees. And it's, what? I like it's that. Still that's similar. Good. It's still yeah. similar to the way well, things we were talking about, but change direction quite severely. Yeah, in fact, the exact change of direction. Uh, <laughs> it's now vertical instead of horizontal. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to mention some patrons. I got some new folks this week and uh, real grateful for these people. And I want to mention their names. Daniel Hall, Lisa Patterson, Justin Onslaught. Onstott, sorry. Mm, uh, I like Onslaught better. I Onslaught's pretty good. cool. Uh, Danielle, Lisa, Justin, welcome to the fray. We have all kinds of great reasons for you to join and a bunch of great people that you're joining in with. We just put up a, a great host special from Dunaway. You're going to want to yeah. go check that out. If you're uh, re- if you're curious at all about his obsession right now with all things retro, <laughs> including VHS tapes, and, cl- and this movie, you watched this movie on VHS, right? I absolutely yeah. did. I, I brought yeah. the I got the VCR, got the VHS tape out, and uh, we watched the Bull Durham to completion. Uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of fun. Can you believe it? I can't. You watched it I on. A, did you have a bowl of Wheaties when you were done? 
I was all out of Wheaties, so I just ate some Fruity Pebbles instead. But he still threw the bowl. They're, they're practically the same. Yeah, yeah he still threw the yeah. bowl over this thing and then had yeah. sex on a table. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, did you did you do a CRT, like a regular old, old ass TV? I did. I, I, I did. I, I watched it on my 27-inch CRT Sharp. Uh, and it looked great. The, uh, the, we had, uh, someone sent me a, a DVD slash VCR with HDMI out. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that was, that was nice. And so now I can, now I don't have to upscale anything. It just upscales it right in the device. I can be lazy. I like being lazy. <laughs> didn't even know that was a thing you could get with HDMI. Out. I didn't either, but from not for like 2000, Hootie sent it to me. And I think this is from 2004 or five. Early. Like that. It's, it's a little layer. Yeah. Yeah. It, that in that generation. Very you early dub. technology. Mm. That's crazy. Uh, well, there you have it. Uh, uh, get in there, be a part of it. No commercials. Get you get pre-show every week. You get those host specials, art prints in the mail, other cool stuff. You just got to sign up now and be a part of the film sack extended family at patreoncom slash film sack. Uh, quick note after the show today, before we talk about our next movie, after the show listeners, there will be, I think five, maybe six longer than usual voicemails that we've gotten that are just a little too long for the oh, show. And they're also okay. mostly just like, Hey, here's a cool idea I had for the listeners. So it's a perfect place to put it. I'm going to stack them all on the back of the end, back into the show today. So stick around, listen to these, uh, these extra calls that we've been hanging on to and, uh, feel free to call in anytime. Go to filmsack.com for more. All right. Our next film will be, uh, shit. I, I already forgot. <laughs> it's 20, 2011's The Cabin in the Woods. Oh, the cabin oh yeah. We got, the, we got listeners at this, uh, the, you know, like last week, a couple weeks ago, I think. They sent us some <laughs> Yeah, DVDs. it's only been a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A, we just got these in. Uh, um, it's also on gone. Max. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and if, you're, if you're like, yeah, but I don't know those people. Uh, it apparently has Chris Hemsworth in there, and like Sigourney yeah. Weaver has a oh, small role. Yeah. I've heard of those people. It's a fun. That. It's a really fun ride. I've watched it several times. It's, it's back it's, before it's everybody was pissed at um, uh, what's his beak, uh, Buffy the Vampire Lady, a creator, uh, it's, uh it's Firefly yeah, guy, uh, director oh, uh, Wheaton. Whedon. No, Whedon? yeah, Joss Whedon. Thank you. Whedon. Yeah. yeah. I don't uh, see yeah. Joss Whedon on this movie. I didn't. So. He directed yeah. it, right? Did yeah. he? No, I Drew, I Drew Goddard directed this oh, one. Oh, he wrote it then. And, or uh, Didn't he? And uh, Drew Goddard. <laughs> Drew, Drew Goddard. You just has, want him in there so hard. Don't I don't you want think? him in. I mean, it'd be fine if he wasn't, but I was sure he wrote it. Or he's Oh, he's producer and writer. Yeah, he wrote it. Him and Drew Goddard wrote it together. Okay. There you go. Uh, well, anyway, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it also had a surprise. Uh, oh man, Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford forgot they were in yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Oh I'm my kidding. gosh, you guys. So you've never excited. seen it. It's definitely a, it's a. What's the word I'm looking? I don't want to say the word I think it is, but it's just a, it's a different. It's a twist. It's like, it's nice. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah, this was actually when we st first started talking about that. This was the movie I was going to use uh, the Pina Colada song for because there's yeah. kind of a list in there, but I feel like. Uh, uh, you know, when Bull Durham showed up, it's like, oh, I got to use it for that. Yeah. Plus, she'll come up with something rad next week. I'm not I'll have yeah. something. Well, hopefully. We'll see. We'll anyway. See. I can't believe he didn't put me in coach, but I can't. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so on Too the obvious. Note, like, why do you feel, yeah. I mean, why do you feel like I should use the most obvious? No, you these? need Jeez. to use, save that for an airplane hijacking. Them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> put me in coach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready <laughs> to slay or whatever. You know, I don't know. I don't want to write yeah. it for you, dude. We'll wait for the movie. That's yeah. what we'll do. Yeah. yeah. We, anyway, uh, we, we are yeah. recording on Sundays for the rest of uh, Sacktober. So, and I'm welcome. just, I'm really excited <laughs> to get started on Sacktober. <laughs> We're like literally October 1st with Cabin in the Woods. And then we got a whole lineup for the rest of the month. Yeah. It's going to be great. I uh, love this time of year for Film Sack. I hope you guys do as well. And uh, next week, we begin things with the spooky tale of Cabin in the Woods. Okay. Much more after that. In the meantime, filmsack.com. Uh, again, patreon.com slash filmsack. Big thanks to everybody who does that. And if you'd like to leave us reviews wherever you get your shows, whatever the directory may be, it never hurts. And in fact, always helps. So go do that. Mm -hmm. That is going to do it for us, for me, for Brian, for Brian, and for Randy. Lollygagging. We'll see you next mm -hmm. week. Get more at frogpants.com. The pussy. Oh, God. Every time. I don't know why that hurts my ears so much. I don't either.